Mesdames, Messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, Kyrie Kikiri, uh, I can't think of any more languages to go in. My name is John Andrews, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this session. And um, it's quite a long way, I suppose, from the uh, current obsessions of, uh, of the news headlines, uh, because this is the Indo-Pacific region. We are going to pivot to the Indo-Pacific region, not quite in the way that uh, Barack Obama may have imagined, but anyway, I think it, clearly whatever the current crises are, the medium and long-term questions geopolitically and economically will be in uh, the Indo-Pacific region. Now, I have a wonderful panel here, which I'll introduce in just a second, but let me just say a couple of words about this Indo-Pacific region and about the title of this um, this session. This session is about security concerns and economic opportunities. And there's a lot to be said about both. I mean, if you take the region, it has, I could argue, far too many nuclear powers. You've got the US, you've got Russia, you've got China, you've got North Korea. You have some real flashpoints. You've got Taiwan, obviously. India, China, they may be members of the BRICS but actually they're often not quite at daggers drawn, but pretty hostile relationship. You've got plenty of maritime and territorial disputes, which I think include almost everybody, actually, every country in the Indo-Pacific region. Let's just take security first of all. There are so many acronyms and initials that we can um, festoon over this subject. You've got AUKUS, Australia, UK, US, Sorry for France there, but France wanted to sell its submarines to Australia, and Australia said no, and it came to the Brits and the Americans. So there we are, but we'll put that behind us. So this is AUKUS. You have US security treaties, actually with Australia, with New Zealand, with Japan, the Philippines, Thailand, South Korea, and you've got non-treaty partnerships with the US, uh, with India, with Indonesia, with Vietnam. So what, if you think of that as one particular block, what is the, let's say, anti-Western? I have a lucky lady may not like this sort of anti-Western idea, but you've got China and North Korea. I suppose that's the only um, mutual aid and cooperation friendship treaty that China has, apart now from its no limits strategic partnership. I'm putting no limits in inverted commas um, with Russia, with the Russia, with Putin of Russia. A lot of uh, acronyms and um, initials for the economy. We've got the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, uh, which I think uh, actually became really from Central Asia rather than the Indo-Pacific region itself, but does now include lots of players from Indo-Pacific, including India. You've got ASEAN, and ASEAN expands. You've got ASEAN plus three. Uh, you've got RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, which is ASEAN plus China, Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand. They can all see the economic potential of this region and therefore they see the virtue in collaborating and cooperating. And of course you have the CPTPP, the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. 11 members so far, not yet China. And um, rather unfortunately, in my opinion, um, America decided not to go for the TPP way back in the, the day, well, days when uh, Hillary Clinton was running against Donald Trump. And finally, you've got IPEF, the India Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity. I know nothing about this, but some, perhaps someone else here does. And that, I think, was launched by Joe Biden in Tokyo uh, last year. Um, will it amount to anything? I don't know. But clearly, we have lots of security concerns, and we have lots of economic opportunities. So really, I'm gonna ask the panel to talk about them in that you know, almost binary fashion. Now, let me introduce the speakers. Uh, to my left, Jean-Pierre Cabestin, um, who speaks much better English than most English people, uh, despite being a proud Frenchman. And as he revealed yesterday in a question to uh, the uh, former chief executive of Hong Kong, is now a permanent resident in Hong Kong. 
I hope that this panel will not get you chucked out, but you never know. Uh, Jean-Pierre Cabestin is a professor emeritus at the Hong Kong Baptist University and uh, was uh, a senior researcher with uh, CNRS in France. Uh, Yuichi Hosoya is the uh, professor of international uh, politics at Keio University in Tokyo. Um, uh, Kim chang Bon uh, from Korea, uh, South Korea, because I realize it is on North <laughs> Korea as well. Um, has a very distinguished career as a diplomat, not just uh, ambassador to Indonesia, but also to the European Union, and now representing the Korean Federation of Business. Is that I got the right title, I hope? Hervé Mariton, very distinguished career in French politics. And um, I mean, he's also um, a very important man, chairman of the Franco-British Council. And really my plea to you, Hervé, is to try to get back my rights as a European citizen. Why you allowed Brexit to happen, I do not know. But anyway, <laughs> that's my problem. Um, and then uh, M.K. Narayanan, uh, the former senior advisor to Mamhan Singh, uh, who was a very, very successful and influential prime minister of uh, India. Long and distinguished career in Israeli intelligence. Sorry, Israel. Israel. I, that's a slip of a tongue. <laughs> and, and, forgive and, me, forgive no, me. Indian no, no. intelligence. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think perhaps they needed you in Israel. Yeah, because... I, exactly. You, you, you took the words. I said, I, I think I better, I would have done a better job than what they did when Hamas attacked. <laughs> <laughs> and also former governor of West Bengal. And then last, but definitely not least on this panel, uh, Doug Powell, Douglas Powell, who has been very influential diplomat, he's been a very influential academic, and a quite a, a rather successful businessman, so, you know, uh, larger than life almost. But, I think from this particular panel, um, one should actually underline that he was once the American head of the American Institute in Taiwan. That means that in the real world, you were the American ambassador to Taiwan. <laughs> So um, I'll introduce you as that. Uh, anyway, that's your platform, your panel. I think they're all tremendous. Just